the pairing of two lovers out of two antagonizing worlds. That's a narrative that stretches back not just to Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, but to antiquity. In more recent times, you can think of Romeo and Juliet 2.0, aka the West Side Story. European comic book fans may add Asterix and the Great Divide, in which the lovers stem from two quarreling Gallic tribes. And, and, and. Hell, I guess every second TV soap deals with similar issues. So Fiona Staples and Brian K. Walken's saga follows well-trodden paths. Here, Romeo and Juliet are called Marco and Elena. He's from the moon of a planet called Landfall. On the moon live people with horns, on Landfall people with wings. And the horn people fight the wing people in a war that has spread out across the universe. Therefore, the lovers are chased from both sides for that which must not, cannot be. Especially when they procreate and have a child with wings and horns. A pretty cute one, that is. And it's one of the brilliant ideas in this book that she, the illegal offspring, is the actual narrator of the story, the saga. Saga got me right from the first page. I have to admit that the birth of a child is one of my weak points. I'm simply unable to dislike a story that starts with the birth of the main protagonist. I guess I don't have to go there all over again. In my first video about Saga, I did nothing else but to show some panels from the first issue and read Brian K. Walken's scripting to these pictures. But a father that chews off the navel cord with his bare teeth has to be a bad ass. Back then, when our first one was born, I was even unable to do it with a pair of scissors. I was just trembling too much. Anyhow, but back to the book. Right off the bat, this video is in danger to be drowned in my love for this book. Not necessarily for the build, because while the first book had soon binding, in the second book they used only glued binding, which is a bit poor. But content-wise, I could go on for hours in more or less lyrical places. Because, despite of the aforementioned generic premise and some of the not-so-new storylines within, what they've done with it, and obviously still do, is simply wonderful. And reading Saga is my synonym for quality time right now. Literally every two pages or so is something to discover, some line from Walken that makes you smile, or poignant panels from Staples that look always so fresh like Mountain Dew, despite the fact that they are all done with a computer. And since when I have stopped hating computer art in comics, I don't know, must have been when I saw the first, uh, the first page of the first Saga issue. One fellow German comic nerd did a whole video in which he waxed lyrical about one quote in Saga. Quote on, the opposite of war is fucking. Quote off. I could do the same with a very casual but poignant assessment. Quote on, I know diversity is an overused word these days, but, but without it, what would we be? Answer. Little more than a bunch of inbred fucking morons. Quote off. Or at another point, when I just was pondering if Saga makes Brian K. Walker and one of my most favorite writers, he comes along with this commentary. I don't think artists should be ranked like racehorses. Yeah, and he's right, isn't he? Nevertheless, I have to say that he is definitely one of my most favorite Anglo-American writers right now, along there with Garth Ennis, Neil Gaiman and Grant Morrison. But I guess what I like most in Zaga are the characters. 
not only the main characters, but the whole cast. Just take for an example the androids with their monitor heads. They are ingenious creations. Instead of facial expressions, they show their thoughts and feelings often as images on the screen. For an example, a newborn android flashes a test screen when he's thrown into this world. Yes, the second saga book starts with a childbirth as, as well. The androids live in a strictly hierarchic society. There are the royals who have color screens, while the lower classes are just, just black and white. And I almost pissed my pants, sorry, when I saw the king, one dude with a giant plasma or whatever screen. Same stuff with it, which neighbors are trying to intimidate each other these days in our real world. Or let's take Isabel, the precocious ghost girl without abdomen. Or the de depressed and hallucinating assassin or his half-spider girlfriend, or the amphibian journalist couple, or whatever main or side character you pick. They are all well written and fleshed out, even if some of them don't have so much airtime. They all have their own distinct voice and are believable, as far as blue and green alien beings could be. And this is, of course, for a very big part, the achievement of Fiona Staples' art, who seems to always start with the characters and adds backgrounds later. Sometimes you literally experience the saga world through the actions of the characters. For an example, when Hazel's breath freezes on the window pane, indicating that our heroes landed on a very cold planet. Ah, wherever you look, Staples' art seems just not capable to disappoint. Bottom line, if you ask me, this series can go on forever. Because, to use another of those quotes from Saga, quote on, anyone who thinks one book has all the answers hasn't read enough books, quote off. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.